did Jesus say? Good morning, everyone. I thought I'd start our collective worship today with some beautiful scenery around the world. Now that footage is real video footage. It's not been made in a computer. It's not some scenes from the movie Avatar. That really is in our world. And our world is a beautiful place. It's hard to imagine at the minute with all the terrible things that are going on, but there really is a lot of wonder and beauty out there. And that's what this week's theme's about looking at our wonderful world. There really is a lot of beauty out there. And some of the things we can't even see without using a microscope. So today and tomorrow, we're going to look at some wonderful, beautiful things underneath a microscope using some science. Let's begin. Feel free to pause the video at any point. You're gonna be given 10 seconds to look at it, but if you need a little longer, pause the video. Science is a fantastic thing. It allows people to learn tons of information about the world that surrounds them. But even better, it lets you look at familiar objects from an entirely different angle. To do this, you need nothing more than a microscope. In this video, you'll see 14 commonplace things in a new light. First, you'll have some time to try to guess what you see in the picture. Then you'll find out the correct and often entirely unpredictable answer. Number 1. Look at these stunning, colorful objects. Don't they look like minerals and gemstones that have arrived from some faraway galaxy? Well, unfortunately, it's unlikely that's the case. You get 10 seconds to guess what it is. In fact, it's sand from Jingdan province in China. As you can see, sand is a mixture of itty-bitty pieces of minerals, rocks, shellfish, and corals. You might also know that people use sand to make cement. Interestingly, Saudi Arabia, which is literally a sandy desert, has to import sand for construction purposes. The sand grains in the country are so tiny that they can't be used to make proper cement. Now that's weird. Number 2. Oh, it looks like an exquisite sweet treat from the Middle East. But if you disagree with this assumption, you have 10 seconds to invent your own version of what this beautiful object is. This thing is neither sweet nor edible. What you see in the photo is a pine needle. By the way, pine trees are real long livers. No, not the internal organ you have. Their age can reach 100 to 1,000 years. The oldest pine tree grows in Inyo National Forest in California, and it's more than 5,000 years old. Number 3. Are they the frost patterns that appear on your window on a cold winter morning? Or maybe it's an underwater worm party. What's your guess? You're absolutely right if you recognize silk fibers under the microscope. This fabric may seem delicate and fragile, but a silk rope is actually stronger than a metal wire of the same diameter. At the same time, Silk is less dense in comparison to wool or cotton. Number 4. Ah, this one looks like a corn cob that's gone bad, doesn't it? On the other hand, this corn might not be spoiled, but rather grilled and covered with salt. Mmm, yummy. Do you agree with this idea? Surprisingly, this object has nothing to do with food. It's a red starfish. Although starfish are living beings, they have neither brain nor blood. Sounds like a roommate I used to have. But starfish can live as long as 35 years. 
The most amazing fact about starfish is that after they catch their prey, their stomach leaves their body through the mouth and digests the food. After that, it returns into their body. Boy, if people did that at restaurants, that would be totally gross. Number 5. Isn't that a color swatch people use to choose the color of their future sofa? Or are these the roof tiles of a very creative person's house? You have 10 seconds to suggest your own idea. Well, this is how a butterfly wing looks under a microscope. Interestingly, under these bright scales, a butterfly's wing is completely transparent. It's so thin that you can see through it. Also, butterflies can't regulate their body temperature. That's why they can't fly when it's too cold outside. Their flight muscles just don't work. Number 6. These look like weirdly colored tennis balls. Or is it some exotic caviar? You have 10 seconds to form your own opinion. These objects are also connected with butterflies. They are butterfly eggs. However, not all eggs have the same nearly transparent color. Depending on the butterfly species, they can be yellow, green, or white. Butterflies glue their eggs to leaves and grass, and an egg gets destroyed if someone or something tries to move it from its place. Number 7. Hmm, it must be some dangerous bacteria. On the other hand, it resembles some human body cells. Do you agree with any of these assumptions? If you agree, you've bet on the wrong horse. What you see in the picture is good old yeast. Yeast is single-celled microorganisms, and they reproduce by budding. Interestingly, yeast can be used to produce electricity and make biological car fuel based on ethanol. And if you leased a real fast one someday, you'd have a leased yeast beast. Okay, boys and girls, we're going to stop there. We've had seven today. We're going to see another seven tomorrow. Well done if you got any of them right. Some Christians believe that when God created the world, he created all those wonderful, beautiful things. Here's the story of creation. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was empty, formless, and dark. But the Spirit of God was there. On the first day, God said, let there be light. And God saw that the light was good. Then he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness night. On the second day, God said, let there be a space to separate the waters of the heavens from the waters of the earth. God called the space sky. On the third day, God said, Let the waters beneath the sky flow together into one place, so dry ground may appear. God called the dry ground land and the waters seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the land sprout with every sort of plant and tree, and God saw that it was good. On the fourth day, God said, let lights appear in the sky to separate the day from the night. God made two great lights, the sun for the day and the moon for the night. He also made the stars. God set these lights in the sky to light the earth, and God saw that it was good. On the fifth day, God said, let the water swarm with fish and other life. Let the skies be filled with birds of every kind. And God saw that it was good. On the sixth day, God said, Let the earth make every sort of animal. God made all sorts of wild animals, 
livestock, and small animals, each able to have babies of the same kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, to be like us. So God created man in his own image. He formed man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into man, and a man became alive. Then he saw that the man needed a helper, so God put man into a deep sleep, and while he slept, God took one of the man's ribs, then God made a woman from the rib and brought her to the man. Hello. Hi. Then God blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and rule over it. Rule over the fish in the sea. Hello, Will. The birds in the sky. Hello, bird. And all the animals that scurry along the ground. <laughs> then God said, Look, I have given you every plant throughout the earth and all the fruit trees for your food. And I have given you every green plant as food for all the animals. Then God looked over all he had made and he saw that it was very good. So the creation of the heavens and the earth and everything in them was done. So on the seventh day, God rested from all his work and God blessed the seventh day and said it was holy. Let's finish with a prayer. And if you'd like this prayer to be your prayer, it's armor at the end. You're welcome to look at the candle flame when it appears on the screen, or you can put your hands and your eyes together if it helps you to reflect. Dear God, we thank you for flowers and trees and sunshine and for all your living creatures. We thank you for families and friendships, for our homes and our school. We thank you for giving us our daily bread and for all the food we eat. We thank you, Lord, for everything wonderful in the world. Amen. Think of a world without all those things that make it special. The plants, the trees, the birds, the flowers, the animals, the buildings, the people. Think how lucky we are to have all those things. Boys and girls, I'm going to leave collective worship there. Work hard, be kind, look after yourselves. And I'll see you real soon.